What's going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java game development tutorial and today is number two in our Let's Build a Game series, right? So when we left off we went ahead and had our little screen here, you know, we created our game loop, we created our rendering systems and we've got all of that stuff going. We've got an FPS of about 2000 here and uh, everything is looking smooth. So today is going to be a little bit more complex. We're again working on the back end of our game here. You know, after we get done with this back end system, which should this should be the last uh, video for our back end stuff, is when we then start to get into the fun stuff of game design, which is you know creating the enemies, the uh, players, uh, upgrade systems, you know, all of that fun stuff. But for now, this is something that, you know, it's, again, it's not the most fun thing to do, but it's definitely needed and it's going to make your life a ton easier, uh, especially if you're going for a large or medium-sized game, right? Even a small game, it's going to make yourself easier. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, create a new class here. And I'm going to name this handler. And basically this handler class is going to maintain maintain or update and render all of our objects in our room. So if, if you're familiar with GameMaker or any of that type of stuff, you know, you have your different objects, right? Since we're going to have more than one object in the game, we're going to need to handle and process each one of those objects. It, it doesn't just happen automatically. So this handler class is going to loop through all of our objects in our game and individually update them and render them to the screen. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and create one more class here. And this is going to be an abstract class and we're gonna name it game object. And in here, so basically, this game object is going to be what we refer to as all the game objects. So it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, say we have our player uh, object and our enemy object, they are both considered a game object, which is this class. They're both going to be considered this class game object. Everything in our game, enemies, you know, uh, players, you know, if we had coins or something like that, they would all be game object because they are going to be inheriting all of the functions that we put within our game object. So with that being said, what does all of our objects in our game need? Well, we're gonna, they need an X variable and a Y variable, right? And if you don't know what protected is, basically protected means that like public and like private, this is basically protected means it can only be accessed by which object inherits the game object. So if, if this is kind of hard to explain, let me create a new class real quick, don't do this. But if we create our player class, this is what we're gonna be doing with our player class. We're going to be extends game object. And now when we extend that, we can use our X variable. Like see if we if we create a constructor for our player. Um, and we set X to equal 30. As you can see, we're not getting an error with our X because our game object variable already initialized it. So we don't need to initialize these variables within our player class. We can initialize them within our game object class and basically everything in our game object class is inherited or, or goes on over, overlaps into our player object. So all the variables we create, all the functions we create, it's all gonna be right there for our player. All right. So let me go ahead and delete player here. All right. So now that we have our game object, and we're gonna do a little bit more to this uh, uh, game object class here but we're gonna need one more thing and basically since everything is considered a game object we need a way to ID what a player is and what an enemy is you know what's gonna be the difference how does the game know if the if the object is a player an enemy or a coin so that's what we're gonna get into creating 
an enum or enumeration, and I'm going to name this ID. And in here, we can set all of the IDs for our game. So we can say player, and I can say enemy. And what that does right there is that now creates an enumeration for a player and enemy. So now we can ID something as a player or ID something as an enemy. So if we go into our game object here, we have protected in X and Y. We can now also create a protected ID and name it ID. Okay, because we created that ID enumeration. And then we can also create like something like uh, in velocity x and velocity y, which are variables that are going to control the speed in the x direction and the speed in our y direction. So you can name that like speed x, speed y. It doesn't really matter. All right. So with that being said, we're going to create a a uh, constructor for our game object, and in here we're going to say int x, int y, and id id. And in here, we're just going to say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, and this dot id equals id. Now, if you don't understand what this means, basically, we're creating a constructor for our game object, which when we create our player object, it's going to need a constructor. So when we create an instance of our game object, we're going to need these three components. And whatever we set into here, whatever we set into the parameters, it's going to uh, automatically set these variables as what we set in here. It's very confusing right now, I know. Once I actually get through all of the coding, you're going to take a look back and you're going to say, all right, now it kind of makes sense. Because once I actually com complete the handler class, complete the player class, you're going to realize what all this stuff means and maybe go ahead and go back to the video and uh, rewatch it and be able to try and understand a little bit more, right? So here we have our constructor, and now we're gonna need components that we definitely need within our class, uh, like player or enemy class, that we're gonna need to write code in. So I'm gonna make a public abstract class, or a public abstract method, void, and it's gonna be tick, and a public abstract method, render, and this is going to involve graphics G so what I'm doing right here is saying okay now that I made it abstract we're going to need it within our method or within our player class I, I again I'm using the player class but it's for all of our classes the enemy all of that stuff so if we make it abstract we're going to need to use it within our player class so let me go ahead and go to the player class one more time let me extends game objects so you can see and here we get a little red squiggle. And if you hover over it, we can add the constructor, which adds a constructor into our game. And since we had abstract classes, we need unimplemented methods, which is now going to be our tick and render method. We can remove that if we want. So now that we made it abstract, we can now code within our tick and render method that we created in our game object class. So now we can also do stuff that we don't need inside the player class like our getters and setter methods so if i say public void set x int x this dot x equals x public void set y int y this dot y equals y public int get x return our x value public int get y return our y value we can say public void set id, id, this dot id equals id. And these are just basic getter and, and setter methods. And if you don't know what getter and setter methods are, basically, uh, hold on, let's see. Let me just finish this up real quick. Return id. Basically, getter and setter methods are we can change our x position by calling this set x value. And whatever we put into this parameter, it's going to then, just like our constructor, is going to take our x variable and set it to whatever we set in our parameter. Now, the reason I say this.x is because this refers to this instance, which refers to our top variable. If I didn't put x in there, it, 
it's not doing anything because we're just sending our parameter that we set into our parameter. So it's not doing anything. So that's why I got to say this. Uh, and then let's do our public void set velocity x int velocity x this dot velocity x equals velocity x public void set velocity y int velocity y this dot velocity y equals velocity y and then we can say you know just get the velocity x return velocity x public and get velocity y return velocity y so the reason I'm putting it on here too is because now that they're not abstract, they're technically still in the player class, but they're hidden. So now that I did that, I can basically call set x to 100, and that is going to set our x variable, no matter what we put in this parameter, to 100. Because we can call it. Because so, this set x is basically within this class, but it's hidden. Just look at it like that. All right, so that should be it for our game object class, which is pretty cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and go to the handler. Now here's in the handler, we need to create a list of all of our game objects within our game because we don't know how many game objects we're gonna have. So we're gonna create a linked list and this is going to be our game object and we're gonna call the list object and this is going to equal new linked list game object. There you go, right? So in our handler class, we're going to need the basic methods public void tick and public void render. And it involved graphics G in that. And there we go. So now that we've made a list of all of our game objects within our game, we can create a for loop in our tick method int i equals zero i is less than object dot size i plus plus so this right here is going to be basically looping through every single one of our game objects because uh, if you're not familiar with for loops it's just basically you know we create a variable i equals zero and then if i is less than our object size so say we had two objects in the room that object size would be uh, two so then we it would go is i less than two yes so then we're going to do whatever is in this uh whatever is in this body of code here and then we're going to add to i so now i equals one is i less than one yes then go through this code again okay now it's two is is i less than two uh or because it, it would uh now now we've added it one more time no, because i equals two and two is not less than two. So it would not run through this code again. That's basically how for loops work. So in here we can create a game object, a temporary variable game object. And this can be equal to object.get i. And what this basically does is we're setting our temporary object to object.get i, which is a function within the link list, which allows us to get the the ID of what we of what uh, object we are at. So object dot get i. If we say object dot get zero, it's going to get the first thing within our list. But since we don't, we want it to run through all of them. And since i runs through the entire list, we're just going to say game object equals object dot get i. And then here we can say temp object dot tick. Pretty simple. It's kind of hard to get your mind wrapped around that, but let's go ahead and we're going to do the same thing for our render. So object dot size i plus plus create a temporary game object, and this equals the object dot get i. And now we say temp object dot render g. So that loops through all of our. Uh, tick method and all of the all of the game objects so it t uh, it updates all of the game objects and it renders all of the game object because it loops through every single one and then we render it so you might be asking yourself all right so now how do we add game objects to the list and how do we remove game objects from the list well that's a function we're going to create right here so public void add object and here we're going to need game object 
and here all we're going to say is this dot object dot add object very simple link list make it easy for you all you have to do is put the dot add operator into it so public void remove object game object object and this dot object dot can you guess what it is remove object and that's the these right here will handle adding and removing objects from our list very basic so now in our game class all we have to do is create an instance of our handler so handler handler and within our game class here handler equals new handler pretty simple and in our tick method we just say handler dot tick and within our uh, render method we say handler dot render and if we run the game you're not seeing it but we now have since there are zero objects within our game we now have our handler uh, running through all of the game objects within our game updating them and rendering them so if we go ahead and let me set this to black just so we can get a little bit better here so if we create our player class which we did right here and say we just you know I'm just gonna do something here and set color to white and g dot fill rec x y and we just make it a 32 by 32 box now we have a player class which extends game object so if we go into our game class here and in our constructor we need to do this under the handler we say handler dot add object new player and here we set in the parameters is here where we set our X, Y, and ID, which we set up in our game object. So here, if we want to set it to 100, 100, and ID dot player, and we run the game, we get a white box at 100, 100. Check that out. So if we can now copy this, paste it down, and set now a new coordinate system, 200, 200, whoops, and we run it again, Look at that, we now have two white boxes and these are individual objects in our game. So now, what if we do this? We say, um, well in our tick method, we can say x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y, which you just basically set sets up uh, velocity x. So whatever that is, if it's one, then our x is just gonna plus equal one every time. So. Now if we just say uh, velocity x equals 1 and we run it, look at that. Our squares are now moving to the right. How cool is that? So if we set up something pretty cool here, such as let's create a random instance. So if we say private random uh, r. And we created a for loop, i equals zero, i is less than, let's put 50 objects in the game. And we bring this up here. And instead of 100, we say r.nextInt width. And r.nextInt height, which just basically gives us a random, uh, oh, we need to make that an int. Which basically just gives us a random number between zero and our width or whatever we put in that parameter and we run it uh, we're actually not getting any oh we get an error here uh, do, 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 do. oh because we need to initialize r equals new random there we go so if we run it as you can see we now have 50 boxes spread across our entire screen and if we go to our player now, and again, this is not something for the game. This is just kind of try and do something pretty cool. So we say random r equals new random. We can set velocity x to equal r dot next int five plus one. So we're getting, we're definitely getting a a movement there. 
and we run it and check that out so now we get all of our boxes kind of going off in random directions which is pretty cool we can play around with this a lot so if, if we just set this to zero zero so all of them start at the same position whoa which is pretty cool <laughs> That's pretty cool. Anyway, so there you go. So I hope you understood this because this is a very large concept to grasp. I mean, uh, so rewatch the video if you didn't understand it. And uh, I hope you can understand it because it really is important. And this really does make your life easier. And I really recommend using this in the future when you build your game. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 100 likes this time. And, uh, let me know if I should go a little bit, or should I go into more detail with this next tutorial if you didn't quite understand it. So, alright, I will see you guys next time.